be able to, to there you are welcome everybody get ready for some radical awakening hey 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 good morning Lakshmi, if this one, uh, if the connection is not good, don't worry, I'll go on my other phone. So it seems to not be a good connection. Can you hear me well? I can hear you perfectly well. Okay, perfect. Thank you for Yay! having me. Oh my God, you've been in my mind for weeks for sure. But then I owe a big thank you to you on the get-go for writing Conscious Parenting because it changed my life. And it changed my life and how I... Uh, love my daughter and how I love being a mother and it's just been revolutionary and I cannot tell you the amount of people in India who've read this book and have uh, really benefited uh, from it so thank you thank you absolutely thank you thank you for having oh last year yeah I'm, I'm gonna try uh, Lakshmi, I'm going to try and go on my other phone, okay? So just let me come back in a second and you can just talk to your people and tell them what's going to happen. I'll come back I on will. the other phone. Bye, love. All right, all right, all right. And send me the request again. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So people, who is Dr. Shafali, right? So she wrote this book many years ago called Conscious Parenting. It's quite radical in the way she... Um, uh, uh, thinks and uh, talks and um, writes about how we can really let our children live their life without fear but with freedom and she gives us tips on how we can do that. So a big part of my Chitta Chilakama also, um, Dr. Shafali is a big inspiration for me and uh, hopefully she will be back for us and you know, oops. And you know what? Uh, please keep sending me requests because I, oh my God, uh, questions, not requests, but questions. Hi, Dr. Shafali, I see you again. And your request cancel. I can see you. Hi, but I'm trying to. Go live. There we go. Send request. Let's see. If, there we go again. Oh, this connection's also. See, there we go. Is it? Do you think it's on your end or my end? Because I typically do a lot, but they, they're not so. Shaky, but I think this is better. Yes. Yeah, this is better, and this is my spot in my dad's house where it, where I do it. So everything is set <laughs> right for it. I have pages. How many hours do you have, or days do you have to go over? My God, sister. Oh, thank you. Congrats, congrats on the on the task of finding you and helping us find ourselves. And, uh, you know, I want to, there is no softly going into this book, so I'm going to go uh, right into it. Um, thank you, uh, anyway, for writing the book that I always wanted to write, word to word, verbatim. Good job on that. It was like, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Truly so, being from India, uh, I went to college in America and I came back and I live here now. I used to work in L.A. Uh, as an actor and now I'm back in India. And so for me, you, you're right there, but... It's the same thing. I went, I saw what I, I can be and who I was and who I am without the shadow of all the shackles that I was raised in. And then I'm back here. At least now I feel I've been brought back here to voice that, you know, and be that voice. Um, because you say um, women around the way, uh, around the world find an oppression to find your, you know, um, your inner voice. And I found that in America, and here I am just all out, you know. Um, why radical awakening? I mean, you, will, you had a softer book called Conscious Parenting, and now suddenly radical. 
uh, what is the because you know I I've, I've done the whole radical uh, forgiveness book by Colin Tipping and I love that book and um what is it with the name why so radical yeah so we're talking about this book if people yes, I don't, I a don't radical know awakening it's called the radical awakening and this is a new book coming out uh so people can order it anywhere but the reason i called it a radical awakening is because we women need to really wake up and take charge of our destiny you know we live in a very toxic patriarchy especially in countries like india where things are very much set the tradition hierarchy and we women are oppressed but in order to radically awaken and change the future for our daughters we need to understand how we are participating in this oppression and that is the radical piece of it we need to come together we need to be solid it's not against men we are missing our own inner power now women in india are very powerful they're very strong we know that the women run everything but yet we have a ceiling there's some place where we stop and this book gives permission to women to break that ceiling and gives us the pathway to break that ceiling all of us know strong women in india we are strong but we get we get a uh, see silenced by the patriarchy and we reach a limit this book is about breaking that limit that we yeah, get silenced yes. by it is that what you said yeah to yeah, the end of it yeah we we get silenced and this book is about breaking that ceiling breaking that limit you know you talk a lot about culture and oppression in the book and if i'm not my culture or what my tradition says because we are so again i say we because i know you're indian as well so you know when how how does one find that inner voice when they've never heard it where do i start like is is there a place is there hope can we start somewhere where i've never i don't know what you're talking about. i don't know what in a voice is is there a place we can start to find that voice right so the first step is to become aware that i have not been following my voice i've mm. been listening to my parents i've been get, getting married i've been trying to be skinny i've been trying to be the perfect girl everyone happy i've been Oh no. I yeah, know, okay. Why, I don't know why the connection is on my end it shows three bars so I'm so sorry. Um mine too. It keeps I'm coming getting back. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, so yeah. So first yeah. we have to become aware that we've been aware. pleasing everyone in our lives. We have to become aware that we've been putting ourselves last. Many of us women think that's the only way to be a woman is to put everyone before us. so once we become aware that we've been pleasing other people all our lives and not following our own voice then we could start the first step oh god yeah you know i can hear you i can hear you do you, do women around okay, the world okay. have this kind of oppression yeah do uh, i can hear you uh, do women around the world have this oppression i mean you've traveled you you've written books and you you know is it is it just here because i'm primarily talking to women here you know in in india and uh, we think that world is so much better outside and you know there is no oppression at all but isn't that a common trait that around the world as women itself that we face this oppression what do you think is there a place that women are superior and matriarchal and is that a problem too Well no I thought when I came to America that the western woman has none of our problems like we have in India but I was shocked to find that although they have more cultural freedom the inner the inner oppression is the same they mm. also are trying to please the standard and meet a standard now women in India are more oppressed but I was surprised at how disconnected even the american woman is from her voice so this book that i've written is helping women rediscover their own voice even in a, a culture that doesn't want to hear it can we hear our own voice can we begin speaking the truth to ourselves so even if we can't speak the truth 
to our father or to our uncles can we begin speaking the truth to ourselves that's the first mm. step becoming honest with ourselves so that's why that it's lead- radical Mm. that leads me to my next question because you talk about shifting from uh, fear to love you know and that when one woman one woman manifests the courage to speak up for herself like a tidal wave she clears the path for other women to empower and emancipate themselves so i also believe that even one story if not all stories are important like each woman has an important story to say what do you say about that yes so we sometimes when we think about making changes in our lives we get really scared because we say what is what am i going to do you know look at the mm. whole village or the whole town how can i do mm. anything and then we let go and we become passive and this book is waking us up to say no your voice matters you must share your story you must show up in your honesty because when you are honest when you talk about your bad marriage or you talk about your abuse when you talk about your uh, guilt around mothering or whatever you're dealing with you allow other women to become their honest selves you know we're all faking it and india is good at that we're all pretending to be perfect for the outside world this is how women continue the oppression from their end by pretending to be perfect so mm. when when women show up honest raw you know i i battle with my uh, inner critic or i deal with my own body issues or i suffer from self image issues or i'm having a hard time in my marriage and i'm sc- talk like that the whole culture begins to change the the biggest way women are complicit with the patriarchy is by being silent by pretending to be perfect mm you say we are radically confused about who we are at the core how do we how do we come out of that confusion like you know i've been doing a lot of self work okay so a lot of your terminology and the words you use i'm familiar with and in spite of that you know the first 100 pages took it felt like 100 years by the time i read the book because i was bawling and i was like that's me and that's me and then when you go down and talking about you know the many phases and you know are you the victim or the empath or the child or the controller and i'm like going i am all of it you know like how do you how do you and, but it was really great to see but i'm like no i'm not all of that i'm most of that but little bit of this and more of this so it really gave a complete um, understanding of the women that i am um but but you know as you as as you said the confusion still exists like right in spite of the work how do we how do we address that confusion well we need to get help we need to read books people think that, that is the most important thing they, can you read people yes, need to get help they they think they can do it on their own yeah yeah you can't do this on your own it's like when you want to be an actor you have to go to acting coaches and they help you when you want to yeah. deal with your skin cancer you go to an expert when you want to go to uh, fix your body you go to the right coach so people have a stigma around mental work mental well-being they suddenly think that that they should do on their own and that's the most important foundational piece of our lives is our mental well-being and in india especially people are ashamed to go to a therapist or to a coach that is one thing i would say in the west people are not ashamed to go from yeah. for help you know so that's why this so, this this dialogue is so important for me uh, dr shifali because i want to remove that stigma i want to be able to say you know i i speak to i spoke to my therapist saying how do i deal with my lockdown like what is my purpose of life like what if i'm i'm not going to be going to work and how do i be relevant how do i find hope like i call my therapist for that and and it's not about being mad it's about dealing with your everyday situations because i having after lived in the west truly believe that we all have the choice of being happy and not be suppressed for the rest of our lives and think this is my fate you can change Correct. your fate right exactly and and of course 
you know, people then think, I don't have the money or I don't have the time. But there's always a way to try to get something for free. There's so much free help now online. I mean, I, in the lockdown, I did 72, hour, uh, 72 sessions called Viral Wisdom, and they're all on my YouTube for free. I did 170 meditations for free. So people are doing wow. things for free. If, yes. you want to, if you want to make your life better, don't be passive sitting at home and complaining about your daughter-in-law or complaining about your cellulite. Go online. Everything is available for free. There's enough for free. So how do we begin? Says is by wanting to wake up. We have to want to wake up. And when you want to wake up, then you yourself can make small changes in your life, in your choices that allow you to know yourself better. Even if you have the worst husband, no money, you know, the worst life situation, you can still get help in a, in a free, easy way to begin to change your, yourself from the inside. You say inner works gives you the gift of authenticity because we're all, do you think we're all living a lie if we're not doing our inner work? So only like what? <laughs> yes, yes, we are living a lie because culture, ah. because culture forces us to, especially Indian women are told we have to look a certain way, act a certain way and behave a certain way. And that makes us put masks on our, authentic self and disguise our authentic self because we've been taught that we have to please other people in order to be good. And this is the biggest lie we women wear and we have to take that mask off. And that's how we change society. That's how we teach our men to handle us the way we are. It begins with us taking off our masks, but we are lying. I used to lie. Is that what I used to pretend till I stopped, till I really woke up. Is that where you say we are all in a uh, state of homeostasis? Stat right. Homo yeah, stasis. that you're in a state. Yeah. Homeostasis. We're, we're, there you go. Yeah. We're in a status quo. We just want to keep up the appearance. We don't want to rock the boat. So we get stuck in the role that culture tells us to play. So, you know, in India, it's all about the role, you know, the good yeah. mother, the good daughter-in-law, the good wife, and yeah. these roles begin to suffocate us. And I felt suffocated in India by the role, not by the people, not by the lovely, the lovely uh, weather or the beauty of the, of the country, but by the expectation that culture put on me that I needed to be a particular way. And if I wasn't a particular way, that was a problem. Yeah, I'm facing that. But <laughs> because I wasn't just, I don't, I haven't just been here my whole life. I don't have to take it upon me. So when people say things, and I'm like, that's not my truth. And, and I am, you know, Shafali, one of my, doc, Dr. Shafali, one of my greatest achievements, I feel, as an actor and as a filmmaker you know, again, coming from south of India, none of the, there is no actor's daughter who's doing what I do. It's only me, right? Uh, when my fans come up to me, women especially, and they say, you know, because of you, I took up this job. Because of you, I decided to move. Because of you, I, it's not I wear clothes like you or I speak like you. Because I always said, find your truth. I wanted to be an actor and I found every avenue. I fought tooth and nail. I ran away to America. And now... The same people who didn't want me to be in it are here embracing me, you know. That's because I was willing to do the work for me and find the truth. Nobody was going to come and fix that for me, you know, and not yes. be afraid to speak about it, you know. And, and in India, um, especially women are trained to be so suppressed, to not speak up because we really have been told, and I, I was raised like this too, that that's and you were raised in Bombay, right? You were in Bombay. Uh, yeah, and it didn't matter. What it didn't matter. Was. And that's the most progressive city in India. That's why I mention it. To <laughs> our mind, it doesn't matter if your mother was amazing. Yeah. You, the culture still gets into you that you need to not rock the boat. You need to please everybody, put everybody first, and don't be a problem, you know? And so every time yeah. we speak up, we think we're a problem. 
every time we speak up people tell us that we are making you know too much drama so we quiet we quiet in ourselves down and we dim our light the only way to change things in india is for women to start shining their light so bright that they raise their sons to be aware that women are a powerhouse and that's how generations will change we don't wait and for the men the... to the men are not yeah. going to wake up <laughs> no that's not wake. happen right right and, and we've that's been trying we really to change... see the change yeah and we've been trying to change the men that's the wrong strategy that's why i wrote this book is for you us women take the charge don't wait for the men in your life to change you can change the moment you become bolder and brighter within generations it will become a matriarchy and it's not about being on top of men but women will come into their power and just having the equal opportunity and equal say and just being equals it's not about higher or lower or bigger or better is is my thing when people say what is your name for liberation for women freedom i said do just whatever if he gets the job i should be able to if i'm qualified just equal we we only have each other we don't have you know i'm not going to go be with an elephant or a horse i need a man like you know i don't want to be fighting with him all the time but same opportunities right. you know i really right. like how you really blend the western philosophy and you know with um, i mean sorry western psychology with eastern philosophy in in all your books because i think a part of me resonates really deeply with that i'm like that's me that's me that's why i said you wrote my book you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um, i think, you know I think for us as a mother I... as a mother yeah go ahead go ahead as a mother especially right now we talk about radical awake, awakening and my city is going into lockdown tomorrow you know and our kids have been in the situation for over a year whatever i learned in conscious parenting certain things i had to throw out of the box because i was like here's your screen time let me finish my live you know right. Right. um the rules and the way that we thought how i how i was attached to certain things are all yeah how do we uh, and then now you're talking about radical awakening how is a mother supposed to make the difficult choice between her children's well-being and her own liberation <gasps> that's a role a big role for all the mothers watching it's very hard to put ourselves before our children right so the the motherhood role is the most sacred role for most women you know it's our most important identity so without diminishing that mm -hmm. and without uh, ignoring that our well-being is a model for our children so putting ourselves first allows our daughters and sons to have a template their woe you know women are as important and their happiness is as important as daddy's so we by putting ourselves equal and sometimes first sometimes the other one goes first it's adaptable it's flexible but by not mm. putting ourselves you know when mm. we grew up with the model of those sati savitri grandmothers who allowed everybody to eat before them and made hot food and stayed in the kitchen while everybody ate and and she thought she was being an amazing mother a grandmother that model is actually unhealthy you know mm. we want to be we want to tell everybody hey wait for me i'm coming everybody wait for me or today i'll make the chapatis tomorrow you make the chapatis because i'm important too mm. like what are we teach what are we teaching our sons to see that we are in the kitchen making hot chapatis everybody is eating before us so he learns oh that's what i expect from my wife right that's not a healthy Bam. that's not yeah. healthy but we feel uncomfortable to say i want to eat my food now thank you i'm hungry it took me a mm. long time in my own mothering to be able to say things like this to my daughter i'm tired now not mm. now uh, maybe later I didn't know how to say these things because I a child comes from, sorry sorry I was I was trained that the child comes first the husband comes first the family comes first but I realized that is my conditioning why don't I come first 
<laughs> yeah. Why am I not important? I love what you said, saying that, you know, uh, how, when I said, how do you put yourself before your kids and to find that liberation? And you said, it's adaptable. Somebody goes first and then you go first but you don't forget yourself. That's the important thing. It's not about always being first or putting yourself first, but not forgetting yourself, that you exist in this equation of the mother, father, child, and, and that we are all equal and not just succumb to a certain role that we're supposed to play in the house. Exactly. And it's, and it's not about not doing your job. It's about treating yourself worthy, the same like everyone is worthy. But we cannot pretend that we don't need to be treated well. We cannot pretend that we don't want hot food. We can't pretend yeah. that we don't like to be served once in a while. Why are we pretending to be these Sati Savitris? Because we were conditioned that way. Mm. You know, the, I'm jumping into the big bam. Uh, quite a few of the things that you do. As I kept reading, I was like, ah, oh, Shafai, how can you write all these things? How can you say these words? Ah. <laughs> And I, I, it was the stigma of divorce. You know, you talk about, don't worry about who's getting that necklace or that sofa. It's, it's more about connection, harmony, and peace. Very well said, sister. Not happening, especially here. And, and, and I've been a big advocate of women being financially independent because, you know, um, my mom said something to me and I said, because you didn't have a choice. You know, I said, I have a choice to do it certain way because I'm not dependent on certain things on a man. How important do you think it is for a woman to be financially independent and not think that you have a good life to be dependent on your rich husband or a husband that provides? How couple, important couple, is it to, for her to have her own? It's very important. But here's the thing. What if the woman did not have her financial independence? It's very important, okay? If it, yeah. But if she doesn't have it, here's what she does have that she needs to use. She needs to depend on her sisters, on her family, on her friends, and she mm. needs to make them support her. So if yeah. not many women in India don't work, okay? So we don't want to make them feel like, oh, I can- No, that's my them. question. That's my question too. How, how do these women take the step to go forward? I, I have a children, I have school to pay. What can I do? I haven't worked since I got I married, know. you know? I know. And, and so many women in India don't work because they can't or they did not have the chance. No problem. And then they're in an abusive situation that they want to get out of. Where do they go, right? I feel for them. And th that's why this book is so important, because when every woman realizes that her job is to support other women, then that woman who doesn't have money can go to her best friend's house and say, help me. But we're so afraid to go to each other for help because and ask like, oh, for she's help. going to judge me. Because she's going to judge me. Yeah. You know, yeah. India is such a judgmental culture. Sorry to talk like this. We're all judgmental, but <laughs> you Indians have all the right. Like, you, 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 you bore, you're a part of it. <laughs> yes, India <laughs> is like super judgmental, and we're judgmental of our women, and that's yeah. what this book shakes you up to go. Hey, woman, stop judging your sister. Stop judging her for how she looks. Who is the most India? Who is the most judgmental in India? The women toward each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And we need to the women. we need to stop yeah. women. Yeah. We need to stop being judgmental of each other so that when that woman is in trouble in her marriage and she comes knocking on your door, you say, Come, sister, no judgment. Instead of saying, Oh, she's having a hard time in her marriage, right? We talk so judgmentally. No wonder women are scared to talk about their marriages. And most yeah. marriages in India are highly dysfunctional. I know most of them, I'm going to jump into it. How important is sex in a marriage? Most it's so so marriages important, say it's only to have children. Sex, you cannot talk about that. And then you have a topic saying owning your vagina. <gasps> Shafali. Ha. Hello. Hello. How, how, how? Right. Right. <laughs> From because... subjugation to empowerment. We need to get into that. Right. So I talk about sexuality. I talk about our bodies. I talk about the vagina. I'll use the word penis. <laughs> Why? Because we need to become adults. You know, in, I, I used to tell my mother, 
how do you want me to get married but you don't want me to have sex before marriage how how is that logical to you and she used to, she used to tell me she, you know stop it don't talk about sex and i used to keep defying her because how do you want me to have a lifelong relationship with someone when i don't even know my own body right so mm. these are double standards knowing your body you talk to... about that yeah you you talk about that right. knowing your own body how can you how can you let another person touch your body when you don't know your own body i was like what what is right. she talking we, we, about we, we, right we've been told that only men should touch our bodies what rubbish is that how are, how is a man allowed to touch you and you don't you're not allowed to touch yourself right so these are all primitive old fashioned uh very childish ways of of looking at sex and life very childish they're not wow. old fashioned how did you just just sit by just saying childish i love it just childish because we're not we're not grown up we mm. we're not woken up we're not adults in our lives we are babies you know oh you know uh, let's not talk about my body part it's your body part you're allowed to talk about your body part we're allowed the word sex should not be a dirty word but in india the reason why we have so much sexual perversion and acting out and rape every india is because sex is in the closet because we're all pretending no one is having sex okay let's pretend and then every girl is getting raped fondled i was molested maybe a dozen times before i was 10 years old everywhere i went i was touched wow. pawed and i'm sure it's like that for most indian girls but let's not talk about sex in india you know this is yeah. the the childish hypocrisy of indian culture you know sorry to talk like that but i've been a victim of it so i'm upset by it you know yeah. <laughs> we got to speak up as we said you know i just want you to know when i was reading uh, the different uh, prototypes of how you wrote people i'm a giver savior and a bleeding empath changing all of that <laughs> but <laughs> i identified myself saying oh my god a, a little bit of a controller too but you know but these things the bleeding empaths though i was crying again reading um the lies about marriage page 193 wait i have to read this out cuz you know only when you read out experts i feel that people really connect to uh, what you're writing <clears throat> the lies about marriage and divorce love's essence is sovereign and, and unhampered indiscriminate and wild it is timeless and boundless it knows no borders yet church and law have dimmed its power and stolen its freedom restricted to only one person and caged it in permanence wow all else is considered treason betrayal and deceit so we've taken this beautiful emotion called love and told people how to love who to love when to love and how long to love them for and basically mm. it's for society you know this is all of our cultural institutions like marriage and the stereotype against divorce is all for the false self how do i look to the outside world that's it your individual freedom is ignored and people will do anything lie cheat uh you know suppress for the sake of keeping up the appearance for keeping up the show and women need to take the lead to say i'm not lying anymore you can lie you can lie and you can judge me but i'm not lying anymore that's why i wrote this book in this book i talk about my own divorce after 25 years in a marriage where i was ready to change my life and i refused to be afraid to say i want to change my life because it makes you upset and I talk about that because I want women to stop living in fear of other people's disapproval. No, well, that's a powerful line and if 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 that's one thing they take away from this live that would be it, you know, to not be worried about other people's disapproval. You know, and then there on page 221 you talked about redefining the cheater. That's a whole another session that I'm going to call you for. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? but i love that when you talked about sex and when you talked about our body 
you did move and talk about the transcendent in intimacy. You know, it wasn't just uh, uh, you talked about people are more afraid, uh, easy to talk about intimacy than than sex, but intimacy is the more important thing than the sex itself. You know, this is just copulating, but this is what is what is it formless and timeless and how you feel, right? And and I don't know why where we lost our own essence of being Indians because we taught the world how to make love. And then here we are that with no clue about mm -hmm. how to even approach a man or a woman, you know, and, and how, where did we lose that for ourselves? And how do we regain, which is ours, which is what is in our DNA and how do we embrace that and let go of, of of this that we've been picking up from you know all over the place right now especially the internet now but then the persians and the british but but really how right. do we, we, we find lost that core that, yeah we we were the originators of the kama sutra and where look at the temple walls and look at how sex was celebrated and slowly through religious indoctrination and patriarchy pressed and told that they are objects and they cannot be expressive as human beings. And by doing that, the division between the sexes became wider and wider. And now women have become so repressed sexually within their minds that we are like infants. We're like children. You know, we don't know how to approach our own bodies, forget a man's body, forget another woman's body. We look at sex with such taboo. So in the book, uh, uh, but we're talking about a radical awakening, um, we, we talk about intimacy and intimacy it has nothing to do with owning, possessing or controlling the other person. Intimacy is I honor you. It's the namaste. I honor the divine in you and you honor the divine in me. We completely have forgotten that in India. It's all about transactions, conditions, and you know betrayal and secrecy. And no one is telling the truth because we don't want to be in honest relationships. We just want to be in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. You have a whole on your part for cra cracking the matrix. You, you really break it down with what I spoke because, you know, each of them about lies about love, marriage and divorce and our sexuality, our motherhood, lies about our beauty and youth and the lies about our niceness. I mean, you were not so nice going into our niceness. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was honest but, and frank and that sometimes doesn't feel nice. <laughs> Yeah, because you know, huh? You 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 crack. You weren't just tapping, but cracking open uh, the shields that we've so beautifully, you know, put all around us. And you just you just see through all of that, and it's like wow. Uh, but but it's good. It's good. And and only then do you see how you are in your own story, and you need people who who lay it out to you because not everybody has access to a therapist like you or you know, um, a psychologist like you, but they all can have access to this book and do this for themselves, you know? So that's the power of the books that you write. And I mean, Conscious Parenting was all about the book for me. You know, I'm still yes. yet to, I keep going to Mind Valley to sign up for that month long thing to, to do the work, but uh, my girlfriends are I, we've been talking about it, but we'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> Um, I, I'm doing I'm doing a, a ten day course with this book in two weeks. So if they go to a radical awakening dot com, uh, they can sign up online for a ten day course if people want to. But you know that's so ten day. To talk to me about that. A ten day course is it? How many hours is it? Is it all day? Is it something you sign up? No, no. In it's for? just it's just an hour and a half every day, but for ten days with hundreds of other women doing it together. And if you sign up, you get three books for free. So if people want to come to a wow. com, yeah, you get three books shipped to you for free. I mean, if COVID allows, sometimes India is tough with the books coming, yeah. but we try to send the books and um, it'll arrive when it's time. Yeah, but right. But we do this course together uh, with hundreds of other women and I give tools and exercises, and it's just 10 days. But in those 10 days, you can 
radically begin to make changes in your life. That is fantastic. I mean, that that way you we have you if we're messing up somewhere saying, "All right, you're in the right path or you're not." So please yes. people, when does it start? Where It starts on May 23rd, so in 2 weeks. May 23rd there is an online workshop that you can do for the book that we've been talking about a radical awakening it's a 10 day course but only an hour a day but i'm sure it will take you the rest of the day to really understand and integrate what what shefali talks about in that one hour because we are bombarded with information and information is available but really integrating that into yourself and and the work that you're doing and the place that you're in is important so sign up people and and take advantage of this <coughs> you know um you talk about collectively creating um a, a new world what does the new world look like in shafali's eyes like ideally like i want i want to look at that in the ideal world we realize that these institutions of religion marriage education are designed to create unworthiness they are designed to dim our light and we should not be afraid to break the institution for our own lives you know and also the radically awakened world will allow women to stop pretending that their entire life is about pleasing other people so that that would be the big takeaway i would want women to take away thank you that's powerful and um you know i i really loved the whole section when you talked about can't wait to step into my queen to integrate and to integrate all my broken pieces they i'm i'm still reeling that's why every time i message you i'm like i'm spinning i don't know what's going on like it took me a lot to be here today and and be all together and ask you these questions and not ball and cry and say thank you what am i going through you know because you're uh, doing great thank you thank you because i read the entire book for one reason that this conversation is more important for me than you know then i mean yeah every conversation is important especially in a pandemic like this and i've got some really incredible people talking about how to deal with this but for pandemic or no pandemic we women have to still live on post this and i think um uh the time is now more than ever and why do you think it is so important that we do it now well the time is always in the now but i think because of social media because of our exposure and because of the pandemic it's given us an opportunity to be in lockdown and to sit back and look at the tragedy occurring and use this pain as a portal of transformation to real mm. ask yourself realize am i living my most authentic life am i living in a way that is real to me because i could die right so when death exactly around, that death the conversation of death every single person has had it in the past year or at least seen it around them or or, or it's come in front of them so how important is it because i think for us women now is always as you said the time is always now but even more now because now did you when you really look at your life and say i could die today and have i lived my authentic life have i lived my truth did i did i succumb to what the world says did, so how do we empower those women to come out and live their truth yeah i mean it's it's an inner awakening you know when you see physical death it always makes you question what else needs to die in me in order for me to be more alive this is happening on a subconscious level now we could suppress it because we then say i can't do anything about my life but that's not true everyone can begin to change their lives on the inside so you pick up the phone you talk to a friend you dare to say uh, you know talk about your honest truth to somebody that you've never talked to in the past you begin to take small steps to become more honest in your own life in india right now there's such a tragedy right it is so helpless making you're all on lockdown it i know this because i went through something like this in new york when the pandemic first started it was a morgue and it it really made me use that opportunity to say 
what within my life needs to die what within my uh, e ego needs to to be released how do i need to live my life in a new way today so allow this tragedy in your life right now in india to wake you up and at least to begin asking am i truly living my real life or am i living for the needs of others and you think we all have an opportunity and a gift to live our authentic life and uh you know sometimes they say oh why do you why do you go to a therapist are you are you mad or do you uh do you, are you so unhappy uh you know and they think that going to a therapist or getting help means something is wrong with you and that you are disrupting what is perfect what do you say about that right it's just a a big social stigma to go improve your life it's as if improve your life, your life. Yeah. i like what you said that because people think it'll disrupt your life what it, what the life that you see is perfect right it's because we're all pretending to be perfect and we're all lying nobody's life is perfect i you know it and i know it but we want to, we prefer the image of perfection rather than going to get help to really improve your life so for yeah. women listening to this who need to get help in their lives but are scared of what the husband will say or the friends will say find one friend who you can pick up the phone to and start taking the steps toward read a book like this take a course and start making small steps toward improving even just telling your friends you know what my whole life is a lie you know how wow. big that is that's huge that's I've huge through, i've been through many moments in my life where i had to look in the mirror and say i am being inauthentic that is the first step to own mm. that you have been inauthentic that you've been lying and so everybody's lying there's no authentic person if you're not doing the inner work if you have not truly gone on a journey you think you're not lying but you are everybody is lying Yeah. Everybody's con everybody's conditioned until you go through the process of deconditioning. So so many people come to me and say, "Oh, I've always been conscious." I'm like, "No, you haven't." Uh <laughs> we are all we are all heavily drug induced. We are under a drug and we don't even know it. We're in a bubble and don't even know it. We're in the matrix and don't even know it. So I know people need to act like they are so amazing but I know how much work it takes in a work to truly decondition from culture's conditioning so everyone is conditioned whether they like to accept it or not Wow wow so I I'm just looking through the comments to see if they have any questions it's all highs and hellos Sri Tamni wa cool i think you know look at this look at all the preparation i went through pages and pages and pages of writing back and forth oh because But, you know lakshmi as i said because, this, because this, you this. because you value self growth and if people idriana says she's loving this info if people do not value inner growth then this conversation won't matter to them so for the few people here mm. who value inner growth this is why you did this so look how much work you did because you care about you know transformation yeah and i really really believe i i am i am one of those women who thought life was this is it i don't have a choice and and i could, i was able to transform that and i and i was looking for it everywhere else other than myself and only when i started looking within i was able to i had control of only one thing that was me and my thoughts and 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 i i'm so grateful for the wonderful friends that i have around me and the help and the support uh and the means to be able to uh, to reach out uh so and and it was it is as important because i want women watching this to say this is not it if you're not happy then you're not living your authentic life 
everybody can be happy and it's within you not because your husband will get that next job or you buy that ne- next le- necklace or a house or your child gets better grades or you get skinnier none of that is going to help if you really don't look at yourself and you're a beautiful self yeah there is a little bit of crap that you need to go through uh, to really understand but then when you really start seeing yourself it's just so beautiful and i was so afraid of seeing myself and i was afraid to seeing i didn't want to there was just so much pain and there was just so much guilt and shame i just i didn't want to see it but through that emerges this beautiful phoenix i feel and that's for all of you watching and dr shafali i couldn't be more grateful for you to be here and and share your book um a radical awakening and i really truly hope it resonates uh, through millions and millions of women around the world so we can all live it, start living our best life and our most authentic life thank so. you so much so if people want to buy the book or the course they go to eradicalawakening.com and uh hopefully they'll sign up or buy the book and uh experience the journey through the book and take the first steps toward becoming more empowered so thank you lakshmi for doing all the homework and i'm glad that the book uh meant something to you and i i so honor you for calling me here thank you so much everyone thank you i hope to see you soon sometime when the world yes. is yes yes much safer yes lots yes. of love thank you bye love bye bye bye